Hello, this is uh, Jean-Éric Henault for CGS TV. Uh, I'm here with uh, Mariana Acuna from uh, The Foundry. Uh, she's going to tell us about the cool stuff they're having at SIGGRAPH this year. So why don't you begin by telling us about what you have this year. Uh, you're going to talk about Nuke. What is new this year? Uh, well, we are going to be rolling out the latest release of Nuke at the end of the year and it's going to have a ray tracer, it's going to have um, a lot of more stability and it's going to have a lot more bug fixes. But that hasn't come out yet, we didn't unveil any, any, any new stuff in Nuke in particular except our plugin, our VR plugin that we're experimenting with that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but we haven't unveiled anything on Nuke just yet. Yeah. It sounds really exciting. Uh, I know you have a lot of people actually using Nuke. It's been around for a while. Can you tell us about who is using your product and what they're doing with it right now? Oh yeah, so Nuke's been around for a really long time. Uh, it was originally from, di from Digital Domain, came from Digital Domain, but it's the industry standard node-based compositing system. And it's basically used across the world, across the world, variety of different studios from places like New Zealand, uh, Weta, Australia, like rising some pictures, Animal Logic, to then you have places in China, in Sweden, in Mexico, in absolutely everywhere, like uh, big studios, small studios, all across the board. Any film credits you can, you can name drop a bit? Oh, all the Transformer movies, all the Harry Potter movies, the Hobbit movies, <laughs> uh, Fast and Furious, yeah, exactly, <laughs> Life of Pi. All Very the small production. Uh, and also, like, uh, there's a lot of studios like Cosa VFX, Ingenuity, and Ingenuity Studios, which are like uh, smaller studios that are doing episodic TV, Soic, so like shows like Gotham, and um, I haven't had coffee, and now I'm forgetting. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's a lot of different TV shows where it's being used. So let's say I'm using another compositing product right now. Why should I move to something like that? Why should I uh, I go towards a platform like that? Towards Nuke. Well, because it's the industry standard and it's what's, if you want to grab the greatest talent that know how to use the software really well to do really complex shots, then, you know, that, that's what you have to use because it has really become, it, it, it wasn't, it didn't happen super fast, but basically Nuke just became standard across the world. So, basically. So, if you want to get paid more, learn Nuke. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> So you guys are also working on new technologies for virtual re reality. Uh, what are you working on exactly? So we are actually um, developing, it's not out yet, it's experimental, so prototype, but we're basically working on a plugin to help on this new way to do 360 live action. So we're gonna help with, the plugin is gonna help with aligning, stitching, reviewing, playback, rotoscoping, tracking, because now with these 360 environments, you now have a whole other world of new complex issues that you have to address. So we're going to help the artists make their life easier with this with these new workflows of 3 It sounds magical. Oh, we wish it was magical. <laughs> no, there still has to be a lot of input from the artists, a lot of their talent to work it out, but we're just going to help on that process, make their lives easier. One thing I've noticed with the Foundry is that you seem to really care about the artists. Uh, uh, what, why is that? Why are you so close to the artists? Why is it important for the Foundry? Oh, absolutely. That's one of the reasons why I love working for the Foundry and why I joined, because they've always been artist driven and the software is production proven and they like we travel around the world everyone getting feedback from every studio from the one man band to the huge studios just getting their feedback their input what they want in the software because at the end of the day they are the end user so you have to listen to what their needs are and not just put whatever you think is going on you really have to address their problems and it's really great to have this close relationship with the artists can you give us an example of a, of a project, maybe a company you've worked with, that has allowed you to improve a feature, for example, something that the client requests that became an actual feature? So, sorry, I didn't get that. Can you give us an example of a client, uh, working with a client that gave you an, a suggestion for a feature that actually became a feature? Oh yeah, for example, um, we, work, we work really close with um, Ingenuity Studios in Los Angeles and they give us a lot of really good feedback for the 2D tracker. So for example, putting the zoom window and making the tracker uh, just stick much better uh, in the workflows that we were using. Uh, so we listened to their feedback and we actually put it in there. So, and also like the deep compositing tools, that's also, uh, that came from Weta and we helped the, develop it with the help of a studio such as what a
Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. I'm here with Jack from the Foundry to tell us about Mari, a really advanced 3D uh, painting tool that is used pretty much in the industry, video game, filmmaking, and it looks pretty cool. What is Mari? So, Mari is really a dedicated texture painting system. So when you've created your model in Modo or Maya or ZBrush, and you really want to put very fine detailed textures onto the surface, you take it into Mari and start painting. So who is using Mari right now? It's pretty popular, right? Yeah, so Mari's really the industry standard for visual effects and feature animation. So if you've seen uh, a movie out of Hollywood in the last probably four or five years, the textures were painted inside of Mari. Can you give us like, some examples? Um, well, Mari was originally uh, implemented at Weta Digital and used on Avatar. So that's really where it came from. But last year, things like uh, Interstellar used it uh, exclusively. Um, Gravity as well. Impressive. Yeah, yeah, no, it's really nice to see it out there and people using it. So what's new this year? So we've just released Mari 3 this week, or at least announced it this week. And Mari 3 is really kind of the, the product of taking the best bits of technology that we had available within the foundry and including them inside of Mari. So we've put the Modo renderer directly inside of Mari so artists can create final beauty shots, but they can also use it for baking things like ambient occlusion and curvature. We took some influence from Nuke as well. So with Mari 2, we introduced a, a very powerful layering system for painting. And although it looks like a layering system, underneath the hood it's actually always been a node graph like Nukes. So in Mari 3, we actually now expose that node graph to artists so they can really choose how they work. And you know, sometimes layers make most sense, sometimes nodes make most sense. And with Mari 3, they can really choose what they want. So if I understand correctly, you can use both procedural textures and you can paint your own textures. How does that work? So in the layering system, for example, we have procedural layer types. So as well as the standard you know, paint layers and maybe adjustment layers, you can actually put procedural effects into there. So noises or maybe oil effects. And all of that functionality is exposed in the node graph as well. So using the node graph, you can actually make very complicated new effects. So say you want a, a really cool uh, wood effect. You can combine different types of noises and different types of adjustments and make a single new node called wood. Very well. Well, this is uh, this is, this is uh, Mari for uh, the Foundry. Uh, so uh, I'm Jean-Éric Henault for CGS TV. Thank you for watching.